Hi everyone, welcome to Washington Reads. I'm Mrs. Lennon. Today, I am going to be reading to you The Girl Who Ran, Bobby Gibb, the first woman to run the Boston Marathon. So this is a biography and it is written by Francis Paletti and Christina Yee, illustrated by Susanna Chapman. Today, we are going to be learning about, like I said, Bobby Gibb, who was the first woman to run the Boston Marathon. Bobby loved to run into the woods, over the hills, through fields and by streams. Bobby's feet flew across the earth. All of her friends ran and played too, until one day they stopped. Bobby missed her friends, but her legs would not be still. Whenever she ran, the world seemed to disappear, and only one sound filled her ears. So she ran with her pack going higher and higher, just her and the sound of the wind in the fire. One day, when Bobby was grown, her father took her to Boston, where she saw not a few, not a dozen, but hundreds of people moving as one, kindred spirits all running miles together. Bobby knew she had to be a part of it. But her parents were afraid. Girls can't run marathons. What a strange idea. Don't you know that? Don't be silly. So unladylike. All Bobby knew was that her legs wanted to move. You'll hurt yourself. She went to the woods to think, can I run that far? Bobby asked herself as her feet started pounding the ground. I have to try. She ran further and further and she ached and perspired and the world whooshed on by like the wind in the fire. So Bobby left home with a secret plan, away from her parents' disapproving eyes. She would train for the marathon. She traveled across the country, running in a new place every day. She ran through lush forests in Ohio and Indiana, vast plains in Nebraska and Kansas, majestic mountains in Wyoming and Man Montana. She ran with wild horses across sweeping valleys and stood on Rocky Mountain peaks. At night, she would set up camp and lie on the ground, close to the earth, tired and happy. She kept running every day, becoming stronger and stronger. Then a letter arrived that made her stop in her tracks. Her application for the marathon had been rejected. Not allowed. It's against the rules. Not possible. Long distance? Women cannot run marathons. What if you injure yourself? The rules are there for a reason. But Bobby was determined to run. She said she would do it. She wasn't a liar. She'd show them by running like the wind in the fire. She returned home and told her parents of her plans. Have you gone crazy? Cried her dad. Bobby knew he wouldn't be the only one to think so. If she couldn't run as a woman, she would have to blend in with the men. She bought a pair of men's running shoes the only kind there was since they didn't make them for girls. She borrowed her brother's Bermuda shorts and found a shapeless sweatshirt to wear over her black swimsuit. As Bobby pulled up the hood, her long hair was hidden and the disguise was complete. Bobby needed a ride to the starting line, but her dad refused. He stormed out of the house and everything was quiet. She didn't know what to do. There was a knock at Bobby's bedroom door. Let's go, her mom said. Bobby's mom left her at the starting line. After running a few miles to warm up, Bobby looked for a place to hide until the race started. Her heart beat faster and faster. Would she be caught? Bang! The race had begun. She sprang from the bushes. Hundreds of feet were hitting the ground and Bobby's were among them. She ran... So she ran with the pack, going higher and higher, the world whooshing by like the wind in the fire. Soon, Bobby heard murmurs. She'd been spotted. She nervously turned to look at the men running around her, but they were all smiles. Hey, are you running the whole way? One asked. I hope so, said Bobby, but she was getting hot. I'm afraid I'll get thrown out if I take my sweatshirt off. The men replied, 
We won't let anyone throw you out. It's a free road. They were on her side. Bobby grinned and she took it off. Word spread, spread quickly throughout the course. A girl was running. They couldn't believe it. The cheers were a roar and Bobby needed it. The ground was hard. Her new shoes were stiff and the final hill was still ahead. But she couldn't stop now, though she ached and perspired, and the world whooshed on by like the wind in the fire. It's a girl! Go, girl, go! You're my hero! Amazing! Keep going! Incredible! Bobby gritted her teeth as the road began to rise up before her. Closing her eyes, she imagined she was back in Montana, running up the mountains, the soft earth under her feet. Her, her throat burned from thirst, and every step was an agony to her blistered feet. It was time for the last push. 30 steps, then 20, then 10. There she is in the middle. Bobby had done it. She was caught up in a whirlwind of reporters, radio presenters, and photographers. History had been made. Hearts and minds were forever changed. The next day, Bobby woke early. Everything was quiet and still. Two days earlier, the world had thought it was impossible for her to run a marathon. What else could be proven wrong? Bobby was looking forward to finding out. She put on her shoes and headed out into the woods, running again down familiar paths. She ran with the strength only hope can inspire. Just her and the sound of the wind in the fire. All right, I'm going to show you this is the real Bobby Gibb, okay? I hope you enjoyed that book. This is the first time that I have read this and I learned something new today. Enjoy.